In the official timeline of Montana history, nothing of note was happening there until the gold rush began in 1862. Because of it, they say, tens of thousands of luxurious buildings and palaces of marble, silver and gold were set up in the wilderness. Gold rush is the blanket excuse for the grand cities built in the west of the 1800s. According to public schools and Hollywood propaganda, the West wasn't supposed to have been developed until the 1900s onwards. Gold Rush has been the slogan to explain the strange discrepancy. I chose Helena, Montana randomly. I could have chosen any town in the not-so-wild West to make my point. The Gold Rush came to Helena in 1864 when the first gold camp was set up. In school, we learned the camps looked something like this. Photo is of White City, Montana, 1868. This is what all of Montana was supposed to have looked like, according to history class. And then there's all the other stuff omitted or downplayed. This photo is the natatorium, spa swimming pool, and the Broadwater Hotel of Helena, Montana, in the late 1800s. Compare it to the gold camp of the first settlers. These simple people, who could barely put together wooden huts, interrupted their search for gold, so they could create a gigantic pool and spa in the middle of nowhere. There aren't even paved roads to the place. Can you imagine how hard it must have been to deliver all those stones, the glass, the art pieces and metal on wooden horse carriages without proper roads? What about all those fragile pieces that were later auctioned off? How were the valuables transported in an environment of wars against Indians and marauding bandits? And who was conscript as architect and designer? Montana was said to have been entirely undeveloped at the time, the great frontier, land of daredevil pioneers. The building looks partially below ground, like it's been excavated instead of built. It was advertised as the largest hot water plunge in the world. The local registry has Helena at a population of 3,000 people in the late 1870 and only 13,000 in 1890. The natatorium was allegedly built in 1888. The people living there were gold prospecting horse riders. These census stats are from the Helena, Montana page. Of the approximately 7,000 people registered there in 1888, how many are able-bodied men to construct this and the many other similar buildings? Excluding women, children, the elderly and the unfit, it leaves us with about 1,000 people at best. Keep in mind that hundreds of other large buildings were built at the same time. If there is gold to be found, are you going to waste your time building a spa, or, would you say, the spa can wait, I want to find the gold? And would you build the largest pool in the world for that small a population? Maybe, maybe not. Don't mind me, I'm just asking questions. Even today, Helena has only 32,000 inhabitants, making it the least populous state capital in the US. The building was demolished in 1946. This is the interior. I wonder. Do style and design reflect the cowboy mincid? Hotel and natatorium were said to have been built by Colonel Charles Broadwater, a railroad, real estate, and banking magnate, who died shortly after these buildings were completed. Those walking the Moorish architectural style facility found lush gardens of flowers and trees, horses for rent, white swans floating on a man-made lake, brightly colored boats, tennis courts, elegant dining, rooms with gold doorknobs, health baths, hand-turned spindles made of imported German woods, Austrian crystal chandeliers, hand-painted stained glass windows, silverware, marble tables, and more. Not too surprisingly, the facility failed to attract enough visitors to cover its costs. After its alleged builder died, it changed ownership many times, but failed to draw a crowd. That's simply because there was no crowd in Montana at the time, and there still isn't today. I found no construction photos or construction plans of the Broadwater Place. I did find other, similar stories in other states. Just one example. A similar-looking natatorium in Boise, Idaho, allegedly built at around the same time. It was also built using Moorish architecture. It went into business in 1892 and out of business in 1934. The Broadwater Pool, by comparison, started in 1889 and fell victim to an earthquake in 1935. Apparently it was normal to build gigantic swimming facilities in the middle of nowhere. In 1890, Boise, Idaho had a population of only 2,000 people. Wanna bet if I look more closely I'll find there was also a gold rush in Idaho. But I don't have to look it up, I've already know the silly official narrative. 
Here's the Cathedral of Helena, allegedly started in 1908 and completed in 1914. Does this look like a place of worship small town Protestant Christians would make? Is it possible that the cathedral stood earlier than the alleged date of 1908 to 1914? This is the Montana State Capitol building in Helena, purportedly completed in 1902 by men with horses and carriages. Today, when a building of this size is crafted out of nothing, there are several cranes, dump trucks, forklifts, machine excavators, bulldozers, jackhammers, wheelbarrows, backhoes and cement mixing machines on site. And even then, modern construction doesn't achieve buildings such as the ones these horse riders achieved without any machinery. At the time of this video, I could find no information on where the rocks were quarried from, how the stone blocks were cut, what building techniques were used, or how the materials were transported. All I found was, pictures of lone palaces in the middle of nowhere. Where is the infrastructure? Where is the town? Why was the capital erected far apart from the main town? You could argue that these were visionaries. Built it, and they will come. Okay. Then where are the construction photos, for goodness sake? What tools were used? I once visited a federal building in Switzerland. There, I found a catalog, in the main lobby, listing where each piece of art, each painting, each design was made and shipped from. It even listed the carrier and the date the item was shipped. Such meticulous bookkeeping. Want to bet that the city of Helena would rather not go into that kind of detail. Frauds don't like keeping records. This is the luxurious interior. And this is how the cowboys actually built houses. It's the Wild West we know from school. The photo claims to be Helena Main Street in 1870. It's like a parallel society. The contrast couldn't be greater. Either we are dealing with two completely different, competing mentalities and agendas, or these people did not build those buildings, and they were already there, before the first settlers arrived. When we encounter grand architecture in the East, historians tell us that these buildings were not real, that they were temporary stage settings for the world fairs. But when the same style of buildings are discovered in the West, we learn they were built because of the gold rush. For instance, this is Buffalo, New York in the 1800s. We're told they were only built for the world fair, then deliberately destroyed afterwards. In some cities, they weren't deliberately destroyed but accidentally caught fire. Similar styles found in the West, however, are entirely real, built because of the gold rush. Here's what I think. They are the remains of an older, defeated and destroyed America that nobody is supposed to know about. The America we see on maps before the late 1700s. The America that was wiped out leaving large barren lands in the West. The America that the Venetians, Vikings and Jesuits knew about. The America that was destroyed in several consecutive wars, claimed to be civil wars, and Indian wars, and cities on fire, and destroyed world fairs. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable, and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button.